Hey there, amplifiers. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you can implement a holistic wealth management proactive planning services into your practice. It's pretty cool stuff. Our guest today is a certified financial planner and behavioral financial advisor. He's the director of Arrowroot Family Office and the co-founder of AFO Wealth Management Forward. His name is Rory Henry. He's a CFP and he's also the author of a forthcoming book, Holistic Guide to Wealth Management for Accounting Professionals. He's had different thought leaders, over 25, contribute to this book. It's a really cool book and he's a really cool guy. And one thing I really like about his approach is it's aligned very similar to how Growth Amplifiers helps um, businesses refine their customer value journey by making it systematic, holistic, and improving in small little adjustments over time. So you can see his approach and you can learn how you can apply this and share and provide more value to those you serve by listening to this interview with Rory Henry. So tune in, share comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. So without further ado, welcome to Growth Amplifiers, Rory. Ah, Kenny, thank you so much for having me on the show. I have been watching uh, from a distance here. I'm a big fan of your work. I'm just glad to, to be on here and hopefully share some bits of wisdom with your audience. Glad to have you here. Glad to share, have you sharing your impact and in, in how you bring value to the table because you bring a different perspective than what others have brought. So I'd like to kind of start off there and if you could start by talking a little bit about your background and the work you do at Arrowroot Family Office and AFO Wealth Management and Forward? Yeah, that's a good question uh, here, Kenny. Uh, at Arrowroot Family Office, we are really a wealth management firm, and I'll define what a family office is. But for our audience here, when many people hear family office, I think they probably think of like the ultra affluent the Rockefellers, the, the JP Morgans, the Jeff Bezos of the world. Uh, but we're really a family office in the sense that we manage the finances of people here at Arrowroot, as well as wealthy families, the mass affluent, and then also the everyday person. So we are a big believer, Kenny, in using technology really to provide for the many financial needs of the client, not only the tax and accounting, but also the financial planning, looking at the insurance the estate planning, uh, the lending needs uh, of clients of really any size net worth. And then, as you mentioned, I do have a program and a podcast called AFO Wealth Management Forward, where we really partner and educate CPAs on how to integrate wealth management services or what I call a virtual family office into their practice. So integrating that CPA and financial advisory world to truly provide holistic advice to clients. And then as you mentioned, I am a behavioral financial advisor. I absolutely love the psychology of money. I know it sounds fancy, uh, but really it is a human first approach to enable us to connect better with clients, to help them uncover what matters most to them and to really optimize their well-being. I think that is amazing. <laughs> One of the things I've learned as an advisor myself, more from the marketing and sales side, is you can give people strategies and systems, but you've also got to be able to help get into their mind and help them see things differently. Because our actions, a lot of the times come from the values and beliefs we have. And if we don't work to change them, right, then we could end up taking the same actions and our actions turn into habits, they create a reality. So you got to get back to that root. I'm, I'm just curious to know a little bit more about, about that. Like, how do you approach um, helping people see things differently and, and take those new actions? Yeah, that's a good question. I recently interviewed uh, Dr. Emily Kugel. She is the head of financial wellness at eMoney. And we talked about this concept of intrinsic motivation. So not just having a goal of, I want to have X amount of dollars in retirement, or I want to grow my business by X percent. You know, what is that goal going to actually do for you? It's going to give me more quality time with my family, right? Or it's going to let me expand my creativity and grow the creative endeavors within my business. So when we can infuse goals with intrinsic motivation, we're more likely to create the necessary behavior changes to ensure that we meet them. 
All the research shows, Kenny, that our values shape our goals, our goals shape our behaviors. So in turn, our behaviors will then reflect our values. And we use exercises like a values-based uh, approach or values-based planning where we help clients select their top five values. And then from there, their business decisions, their personal decisions can emanate from those values. I value my family, so I'm going to make sure that I'm setting money aside for my education or that I'm setting money aside for re my retirement. Does that make sense? It, it does. And, and I like the fact that you're not only helping people out yourself, but you're also empowering others to do so. So you're a, you're a CFP and that you help other accounting professionals learn how they can, can help spread this message and cultivate that change in their practice. One of the things I firmly believe is that a lot of accounting professionals are playing small. They're, they're too focused on checking the box and just doing the role that they've been hired to do. And I, and I ask them, do you think you could provide more value to those you serve? A lot of them say yes. And they think, well, if my, if my customers needed more help, they would ask. What's right. the challenge with that logic? Yeah, they don't know what they don't know. Bing, right? <laughs> they don't know what they don't know. So they may never realize that they should be doing something. They may never get around to asking for it. Everyone's yeah. busy with their day to day. And so as an accounting professional, it's your opportunity to help share and other things that they should be considering and then help guide them into that action. So how, how do you work with accounting professionals to <laughs> introduce this in their practice? Yeah, that's a good question here, Kenny. And I always say, I'm a behavioral financial advisor. I'm really in the belief in the behavior business. I believe that this is one of the greatest professions out there. Those that are listening, those that are practitioners are uniquely positioned to really not only be those tr that trusted advisor, tr I'm sorry, when you edit this out, I think they're uniquely positioned as not only the trusted advisor, but to become that transformational advisor. They are the ones that are guiding these small and medium-sized businesses, which are the backbone uh, of our country. And I always say, you want to do the self-assessment. You want to go through the, through the process yourself. I believe that everybody should, in essence, have a plan for their future, not only a business plan, but also a personal financial plan. And not everybody does. So I'm out there on a mission to use behavioral finance, to use a human first approach. People not only plan for their future using holistic financial planning, but also to look at their behaviors. So when we go through the process, the methodology of behavioral finance or a human first approach, we really want to do an examination of our relationship to money, Kenny. Our relationship to money is formed in our childhood, in those earliest years. You know, what was your first money memory? Like if you take a second as a listener here, do you remember what your first money memory was? I mean, Kenny, do you remember yours? Hey, one of my first, like being in first grade and getting the weekly dollar allowance and, ah. and, and thinking, cause I was kind of like the delay of gratification kid Yeah, and still kind of am now, but yeah. I remember I like I saved up a hundred dollars and I thought I was like rich. <laughs> I thought I was balling. <laughs> Making like, it rain. Yeah. You know, and um it did have an impact on how I continue to show up. Yeah. Um and, and have that mindset. Oh I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that marshmallow experiment is often cited by many people about the delayed gratification. Um so thinking about how that first money memory is shaped how Kenny makes decisions when it comes to his business, you know, and his personal finances. So do, we don't, we just don't do that examination, Kenny. And so I think it's important that we can look back at our past um, to see who influenced us and also what events influence, because there's only influential people, but there's certain events that may inf influence your beliefs around money. So that's one way to look at it. So I really try to frame it, Kenny, in a past, present, future. So looking at that past, as we just talked about, and then that present is really doing the values exercise that we mentioned here before. So going through our values so our decisions can emanate from that perspective. And then I am belie a big believer in not only looking at the financial aspects of our well-being, but the other dimensions of our well-being. So our emotional, our social, our occupational, 
our intellectual, because our finance is just one aspect. We got to really look at the holistic well-being of who we are and to quantify that. So to really look at, you know, where am I with regard to my social well-being? We used what's called scaling questions. It's used in therapy. You could do one to three, one to five, one to 10. So on a scale from one to 10, Kenny, what would you say your happiness is with regard to your social well-being? You say, hey, Rory, tell me, Kenny. <laughs> That's a, a good question. I would probably need to quantify, quantify what does social well-being mean in this instance? Yeah, let's say friends, family, you know, your your network, your relationships. So I would probably say if, if one to 10, I'd probably put it at, at a, an eight. Ah. I would say I'd, I'd probably say from the family side, I'd be a 10. But yeah. honestly, the pandemic through some of my my social and it's, it's a could say it's a cop out it's like that's a few years ago now <laughs> but it, did, it did change some patterns of behavior of which people and groups i was a part of yeah and and then i haven't really gotten back into the habit with some of those things yeah so yeah i would i would kind of want to improve in that area yeah so i mean, thank you for the sharing that so we can use that metric right we put a quantifiable number on a qualitative measure so say you were a six Kenny. let's just throw that out there like we could then say what would make that an eight or a nine and then you would say hey rory well you know spending more quality time with my family here or you know hanging out with some friends on a trip uh is something that you know i think um, I, I've talked about in the past. So really looking at the many dimensions of well-being. Once again, this isn't financial. We're looking at the whole life of, of, of someone's uh, well-being. So that's the other aspect. Uh, so looking at that past, kind of doing the present values-based exercise, looking at you know the person's many dimensions. And then I'm uh, a big believer in really looking to the future and providing a, a goal of where we want to go in life. I've interviewed uh, Hal Hirschfield, who's the professor at UCLA. He is the foremost authority, Kenny, on this concept of your future self. And he showed that in his research at Stanford that we see our future selves as really no different than a stranger. So many times we don't make choices with that future self in mind. So there's ways that we can uh, make better choices by creating a vivid visual picture of a future state how we're going to feel in that future state, which will then allow us to make better choices in the here and now. Hey there, this is Kenny from Growth Amplifiers, here to ensure you get your awesome ideas into action to grow and improve your business and achieve your full potential. Take the first step by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. Take the assessment to get your personalized score. Then select from free resources to learn how to improve your score. Don't wait. Be proactive and take action now by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. And always keep on amplifying. Now, let's get back to the show. I love it. You know, we, we talked about holistic approach and you're looking at, you got to deal with the past. You got to be present and know where you're currently at. Yeah. So you can get to where you want to go. Yeah. Really helpful. I'm a big fan too of, of, like those small little changes can make a big difference. When you ask me the question on a scale of one to, to 10 and, and just thinking about, yeah, it, it took a pandemic, a yeah. pandemic, something came into my life and it changed my behavior. And then that's typically how we live in life. We, where we, we react to the things that come in. But what I like about your approach here is it's proactive rather than waiting to have a pandemic yeah. come about to change right. your behavior, you can say, all right, well, what what do I need to do? What are something that could be done to, to move that score up, to improve, yeah. to make those small little adjustments? Yeah. Um, that's that's really cool. And, and what and what we could do to get it be a 10? What would be the ideal scenario? We use a, a concept called your best hopes question. So if you could wave a magic wand and and all your dreams and hopes can come true, what would that life look like, Kenny? You know, who would you be with? Where would you be at? And what would you be doing? And how would you feel? It's it's great to have that definition. It's it's a, a question that I ask a lot myself, and a lot of the times the answer when pe when you ask people, what is your bold vision? What are you looking to create yeah. for yourself in your life? What's important to you? A lot of the times, what we hear is. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So if you're tuned in, listen up. You know, here we have an amplifier who's who's <laughs> here 
making a change in the world, reminding you you're in the captain of your ship. Yeah. And we can't have our face buried in numbers all day. No one's asking yeah. you to do that. But it's worth taking a little time to make sure that you've got a plan in place and that you're making progress and you're on track to get to where you want to go. Um, which speaking, getting to where you want to go, I know you've got a book <laughs> coming out shortly. Can you tell us about this book and what motivated you to write it? Oh, that's a good question here, Kenny. I was speaking with Seth Feinberg, uh, accounting um, uh, consultant. He was the former uh, editor, your editor uh, at Accounting Web. And he said, Rory, the accounting profession really needs a how-to guide when it comes to integrating these services, when I talk about our virtual family office model, integrating the tax planning, financial planning, the insurance, the estate and exit planning, he's like, they really need a how-to guide uh, to be able to integrate this into their, their service offering. And so I went about uh, doing that and I was able to get 24 plus thought leaders from accounting, uh, wealth management, behavioral finance and technology to contribute chapters or portion of chapters to the book to talk about these integrated services and really the future of advice. Names that you're probably familiar with, Kenny, Blake Oliver, Randy Johnson, Seth wrote a chapter, and then I have many of the the, the tech uh, CEOs and thought leaders on the wealth side um, that have lent their expertise um, to be able to talk about how we can really integrate this in an authentic way. And I use the behavioral finance, the human first approach that we've somewhat touched on during this conversation as the communication piece and the way to connect with clients to not only provide services. I had Ron Baker on the podcast and Ron talks about not delivering services, but really guiding transformations. And he got that from uh, the book, The Experience Economy. And I'm a big believer in having that type of offering and value added services uh, for clients. So we're not just delivering services. Ron talks about we are staging experiences and then guiding transformations. And I think that's what really the future advice is, is not just delivering a type of service, but really changing people's lives, transforming people's businesses, helping people transform their personal lives. Like I said, as my as my mission is to really help people optimize their well-being. It's You could sell a gym membership or you can help train someone to be a healthier version of themselves, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it's really it's really important to step back and look at that. And I'm a big fan of the book, The Experience Economy. I've also got yeah. Ron Baker's latest book, Time's Up. Yep. Uh, and a fan of some of the other people you've got coming up in your book. By the way, where could people go to learn more about you <laughs> and, and your book and and all this information? Yeah. So I have a, a book website, advisroar.com. So I trademarked the term advise roar. <laughs> Kenny. Uh, Roar is short for Rory. No, it's it's not really. Roar is short, uh, is an acronym for, what's that? The Roar. <laughs> yeah, Roar. <laughs> no, but I trademarked advise Roar. The Roar stands for a return on relationship. I'm big on not only relationship with our clients, but then the relationship with ourselves. So you go to advisroar.com to get information on the book. And then uh, we have a site where we uh, work with accounting firms to really integrate wealth management. And that uh, website is wealthmanagement4.com. You can always reach me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, I'm always accessible on those platforms. Um, and then Arrowroot Family Offices uh, is our family office here where we work with clients um, in our wealth management service and family service offering. So that's the those are the best ways to reach me. Well, thank you for sharing that. And then what while we're talking about that, um... What are some best ways that maybe accounting professionals who are wanting to dip their toe into this and they say, uh, I would kind of want to start offering holistic services to clients, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't have the time to do all this stuff. I don't know. What, yeah, well, that's great. The, bo the book would be a good start. You can get so much information from that, but then just contact me. Uh, I can give you some tips, some tools that you can start using to dip your toe in the water if you're interested. I believe tax planning is a great start for firms out there to start with that tax plan, which in essence is really a short-term financial plan. But there's ways to partner with folks like us at Arrowroot or other wealth managers out there that you can start working with 
uh, them to provide for the holistic needs of that client. You can be that tax, the accounting, the business advisory arm, and you could partner with a wealth manager to provide those other services. And there's a number of great tech-enabled solutions. As I stated earlier, I believe you should do the work on yourself first. So it, doing a holistic financial plan uh, yourself, and then also doing an estate plan. There's great technologies out there, Kenny. A couple authors in my book, but one of them is a CEO for my technology company called Trust and Will. You can do a trust for as little as $599, I believe, as well as a will for $180. I call estate planning, being able to provide a family office level of care. 60% of the population doesn't have an estate plan or an up-to-date one. So that's a best, that's a great way to get started to really look at all your assets, all your liabilities. It can connect generations as well. So estate planning is another great entry point into start starting to offer this holistic advice. Wonderful, my friend. Rory, it's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast, sharing your insights, hearing the cool things you're doing. That's a great, <laughs> a great acronym, Advise Roar, and a cool book project. Definitely looking forward to checking that out. Uh, one of the ways we end these shows is if you could share something that you've learned on your life journey that would be helpful for others on theirs. It could be related to what you do in your industry or it could be anything that comes to mind that you'd care to share. Ah, that's a good question, Kenny. So I started improv in 2016, and it was probably one of the best things I've ever done. It got me out of my comfort zone, allowed me to have a podcast. I now have over 160 episodes. I would never have thought that I would be able to interview you know, Titans of the Professions um, before doing improv. It allowed me to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. So if you're out there and you're, you're maybe not feeling comfortable talking in public or uh, speaking in front of a number of people, I, it's a great way to really break out of your, your your shell and get out of get out of your get into uh, being uncomfortable, um, so that was probably maybe my tip or tool that I talk about from time to time. It's also a great way to actively listen, stay present. We work with making sure that we're staying present in scenes, um, and then it just allows you to take chances, uh, not only on stage but in life. It's a great point as well. I've heard if you're not uncomfortable, you need to get yourself uncomfortable. You should yeah. stay in your uncomfortable zone. Yeah. That's how we grow. We grow and we challenge ourselves, um, which by the way, I, I'm signed up for an improv class coming up. I love it. Do it, Kenny. Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> so thank you again for being the amplifier that you are. If you're tuned in, think about one thing that you could do from this, from this podcast. Think of one action that you could take, even if it's just checking out and maybe getting a copy of the book. There we go. Or maybe it's looking into that tax plan or that estate plan or something. Don't just listen. Take action. Be an amplifier. Till next time, keep on amplifying. Thank you, buddy. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.